ASH 2015 coverage continues. I'm Thomas Baldrick, joined again by Dr. Courtney DiNardo from the MD Anderson Cancer Center. Thank you, we appreciate your time. Happy to be here, thanks for the okay, opportunity. Okay, so you've been busy. Let's talk about um, IDH1 mutation positive hematologic malignancies receiving AG120. Uh, what can you tell us about this as an overview? Right, so, um, so acute myeloid leukemia, we've talked a little bit about this already, is a very kind of clonally diverse, heterogeneous patient population. Uh, the leukemia itself is very heterogeneous and in about 20% um, of the time in acute myeloid leukemia patients you'll have an IDH mutation, either an IDH1 or an IDH2. And similar to the FLT3 inhibitors that have um, become a, a well-known kind of targeted therapy in the leukemia world, we now have IDH inhibitors, IDH1 and IDH2 inhibitors that um, are now in the clinic. And so I presented the results, the preliminary results of AG120, which is the first-in-class IDH1 inhibitor for patients with relapsed or refractory or otherwise IDH1 mutant positive uh, leukemias. And um, so far we've treated 78 patients. And of those patients, we've seen some very nice responses in the relapsed refractory setting, monotherapy. So this is a, this is a difficult population to treat. Most patients have already had cytarabine-based chemotherapy, hypomethylating agent-based therapy, and there's not, not standard of care options available. Um, and, and with a very well-tolerated um, oral daily pill, we've had about a 35% overall response rate. What's interesting about these responses is only about half of them are true CRs. We're seeing a lot of um, partial remissions. We're seeing quite a few um, um, stable disease patients that are deriving benefit. And so what's interesting about these, this compound and the other IDH inhibitors is we're seeing responses that, that go beyond the IWG official leukemia criteria. Um, so we'll have patients that have a very nice improvement in counts. They're feeling great. They're no longer transfusion dependent. They're not getting infections anymore, mm -hmm. but they still have documented leukemia. And so it's a little bit of a different um, uh, kind of way to wrap your mind around these patients that are deriving clinical benefit, but aren't necessarily obtaining the, the milestone of that CR that you really want them to. So it's definitely an interesting um, new, new class of therapy. What does this mix of responses indicate to you? I think what we have right now is a is a very effective drug for one specific mutation, and we we know from you know from the the decades of work we've been doing that leukemia is not a uh, it's not just one mutation or one genetic change that that leads to the leukemia, right? So there are many different things going on, and so my my hope is that when we can move this forward into the frontline setting, and come with uh, other effective strategies, cytarabine based, hypomethylating agent based, that we'll see we'll see more kind of durable and more lasting responses, yeah. Of the results from your poster, what's most intriguing or, or most important to you? I think, um, I think what I was saying, so when you look at the, um, the patients that are, that are responding well in study, we have patients, and it's early, the pa patients we've been enrolling since, um, I wanna say April of 2014 up until October of 2015 was, is this data cut. And um, in patients who are responding, we have patients on study for about six months is the median time on study. So these are durable responses, um, but you don't have to be in a complete remission to be you know, doing well on study six months into therapy, which is, which is um, a bit of a game-changing concept, I think, for us. So that's been the most notable. Um, the other thing that's interesting about these compounds is they, they seem to promote a differentiation type effect, so similar to in our world, the all trans retinoic acid, the atro related differentiation that we see in, in acute promyelocytic leukemia, that seems to be happening with the IDH inhibitors where they, they are not cytotoxic, they're not killing the leukemia blast, but they're actually allowing them to differentiate into their normal myeloid counterparts. So you still see the IDH mutation in these mature neutrophils. So it's, um, it's an actual differentiation type, type effect. So that's been very, um, very interesting. So where do you go from here? So um, as I said, I think um, I think it's it's a bit naive to to assume that a single targeted therapy is going to work in a multiply relapsed refractory setting on its own. So so the goal is to move it up front in effective combinations for um, for I think the best responses. Thank, Thank you. you. We wish you luck. Take care.